is the screen is, is visible over there? Yes, sir, it is visible, sir. Anama? Visible, sir. Fine. So we can start. So uh, in this uh, today's class, we are going to discuss about the uh, ranking cycles, uh, then the order of the ranking cycle, then uh, some nozzles, then uh, uh, simple jet propulsion systems. So in the last class, we discussed about the uh, steam and its thermodynamics properties of uh, steam. Then we can uh, go to the uh, So, so to look at uh, the ranking cycle so so in the first few slides we, we are going to look uh, the simple ranking cycles then first of all we have to know the difference between the gas cycles and the vapor cycles so you know we already studied a lot of uh, thermodynamic cycles but we have to know the difference between the gas cycles and a vapor cycle so a gas cycle uh, it, uh, in gas cycles, uh, the working fluid is gas, you know very well. There is no phase changes during pole cycle. Uh, this is very, very much important. There is no phase change happening. Air is working fluid here. It is the uh, uh, temperature versus uh, uh, entropy graph for the gas cycles in the uh, figure. So you can uh, get the uh, gas cycle with this TS diagram. So in this in this uh, diagram, we have uh, two isentropic processes and uh, two constant pressure processes. So uh, the thing is, in gas cycles, there is no phase changes during the whole cycle. But then in the case of a vapor cycle, the working fluid is vapor. Uh, during the cycle of uh, phase, uh, during the cycle, the phase change will occur. Right. So here we are using uh, vapor as your uh, working medium. So you know what is vapor? So water is a uh, vapor is a water, uh, the other form of water, right? So it is a, a liquid at some points in the cycle. So the, if you use a vapor in your uh, cycle, uh, then uh, in in some cases uh, there will be a phase uh, liquid, right? So that is called a vapor cycle. So this uh, TS diagram will show you the uh, uh, vapor cycle, right? So here we have uh, again uh, two isentropic uh, processes and uh, two uh, uh, is constant pressure processes. But uh, there will be a uh, shift change. We will look what is that in the upcoming slides. Then uh, this is the uh, applications of steam power. Uh, the, vapor uh, cycle so steam power plant is the one of the application so we can apply the uh, uh, vapor cycle for, to produce the power with the use of this steam power plant so actually if you look this uh, cycle this is your cycle right so we have a turbine we have a boiler we have condenser and we have pump we have pump so this will give you a uh, vapor cycle right so we will look that so in so the example of our vapor cycle is the ideal rank the ranking cycle so we can call the vapor cycle by the name of ranking cycle so in a real uh, ranking cycle the compression by the pump and the expansion uh, in the turbine are not isentropic so we seen that uh, there is a two isentropic process but in real uh, ranking cycle that is not possible so in other words these processes are non reversible and the entropy is increased during the these two processes. So this uh, uh, somewhat increases the power required by the pump and decreases the power generated by the turbine. So in normally in ranking cycle, we have a turbine, we have a boiler and we have a condenser, then we have a pump. So, so we need more power to, to run this pump and uh, the uh, power produced by the turbine maybe uh, get decreased. So the other engineers and the uh, rankings make it modified. Then we they produced uh, the ranking cycle. So 
so these are the main components of the uh, uh, ranking cycle so we have boiler we have turbine we have condenser and we have a pump and also we have cooling towers right so so this is the main components of our ranking cycle so this is a black diagram of a ranking cycle so there will be a boiler there will be a turbine then there will be a uh, condenser right then there will be a uh, pump so in gas gas turbines they they we, we will use compressor so instead of the vapor cycle we, we will use pump right so, so this is a black diagram of our uh, ranking cycle then uh, we can get we have to supply uh, heat to the heat in the boiler and we have to exchange we have to remove the heat in the uh, heat exchanger that is called a condenser then we can produce w by the uh, turbine and we have to give the uh, work into the pump so these are the components of our uh, ranking cycle then ideally for a steam boilers so if you look the boilers the constant pressure heating process of water to form steam is happening right so in normally in boiler there is a constant pressure process will happen to produce steam right so for the turbine the reversible adiabatic expansion process will happen of the steam right so right you know so the reversible adiabatic process is isentropic process right the reversible adiabatic process is isentropic process so that will happen in the a component turbine then we have the condenser so this again have this reversible constant pressure heat ejection right so here also the constant pressure process as the steam condenses still it becomes saturated liquid so in condenser uh, the steam gets cooled to uh, to come uh, to to segregate the saturated liquids in the steam right so for the pump the reversible adiabatic compression of this liquid uh, liquid ending at the initial pressure again there is a isentropic process so in pump we have isentropic process so this uh, liquid okay so here after the condenser we will uh, get the saturated liquid then this saturated liquid is uh, pumped to the boiler again with the initial pressure right so these are the components and these are the functions of our uh, ranking cycles then so this will give you the uh, uh, cycle of a ranking ranking cycle and ts diagram of ranking cycles so then these are the uh, processes of our, our ranking cycle so if you consider this point as one so this is initial stage the pump is the pump process is isentropic process that we discussed then this boiler so in this boiler the ice again uh, isentropic process so isobaric process that is constant pressure process will happen to produce steam then in turbine we have a isentropic process again right so then in condenser we have again isobaric process right so these are all the processes involved in ranking cycle then this ts diagram will give you the uh, uh, properties of the states then uh, during this process during pumping process there is isentropic process right there is isentropic process right so it may be from this point so we, this also yet isentropic process in the process one to two then again we have uh, this uh, constant pressure process then again, again we have this uh, isentropic process then we have isen again constant pressure process so this is the uh, uh, ts diagram of our simple ranking cycle then uh, just uh, we have to look at the uh, the processes of each and every components so say for example if you consider the turbine in the ranking cycle just take the processes as one and two in turbine right so if the uh, vapor enters the turbine and 
the vapor exits from the turbine is considered at the states 1 and 2, then we can produce the work done by the turbine. So at state 1, the dry saturated or superheated steam will be entered. At state 2, we can get the wet steam because so this dry saturated and superheated steam will uh, uh, do some work to rotate this uh, turbine. To rotate this turbine, then after the rotation of a turbine, we can get the wet steam. Uh, it's exhaust from the turbine. Right. So if you consider the uh, uh, enthalpy in state one, that will be cal calculated by the W of the turbine plus the uh, enthalpy of the exit. Right. So you know WT will be turbine work. And we can calculate this WT with this uh, reshuffle of the formula, right? So also we can rewrite the equation as W2 is equal to H1 minus H2. So that is change in entropy, right? So in turbine, we can found the turbine work with the difference of this entropy, three uh, enthalpy, right? So here are some assumptions made. The process is adiabatic, you know. The reversible and isentropic turbine does not absorb heat. So we have to assume this turbine won't absorb heat. Then only we can get this equation. Right. So normally the, the people who are manufacturing these turbines will uh, do like this. This uh, turbine won't absorb any heat to produce powers. Then we can move to the next common. Sorry, uh, here also we are discussing about the turbine. So here one and two represents the saturated steam at a boiling point entering the turbine and leaving us with steam that you know at a uh, boiling point. But on a different uh, fresher at a two, as uh, uh, ideally process uh, in case of turbine is adiabatic. Adiabatic, right? So just we can compare this. So this is a turbine process. So this is actually the uh, isentropic process, but there is a pressure difference in the state two. Actually, the difference of the pressure in this uh, state one and pressure in this state two is actually uh, adiabatic, right? So there will be a shift, right? So there there will be a shift. So this will come here or maybe come here, right? So the entropy is, but the entropy is same, but in actual case due to friction and heat transfer. So there is uh, two possible uh, factors involving in the state two. So in turbine there may be possible of friction and there may be a possible in heat transfer. So we have to consider that, right? So. So we have the formula of a uh, uh, done of a turbine with this uh, change in enthalpy. So hence H2 increases so that the turbine work and efficiency decreases, right? So because of this friction and heat transfer, H2 will definitely increase, right? So, so if H2 increases, we can get the uh, increased efficiency, uh, increased uh, turbine work sorry the both the turbine work and efficiency will decrease right so we have to avoid this friction and we have to avoid this heat transfer in the turbine right so uh, so if we consider the uh, these two uh, parameters that is friction and heat transfer we have to add that heat loss also in the uh, whole work done produced by the turbine so the w turbine will be h1 minus h2 minus we have to neglect that heat loss also then on the graph one to two shift towards the right because of this heat loss right so there may be chances to uh, shift from two dash or two double dash right as is a real gas uh, the entropy change is positive for the uh, reversible uh, feasible process so if we consider losses only due to friction, the, uh, the point two will shift on the right side as H2 is more than the ideal value, right? So because of the uh, 
uh, losses so there will be a shift in the state 2 right so if there is a loss a heat loss also to be considered the h2 will decrease accompanied by the decrease in entropy right so again there is a shift uh, in the h so if a heat loss is large the end state may shift towards left right so it is a possible uh, right side or towards right side right then it may show happen that the entropy increases due to frictional effect uh, just a uh, balances entropy decrease due to heat loss so that uh, the initial and the final entropies of steam in the expansion process are equal right so but these are some assumptions right so since heat loss is generally negligible so entropy change is accompanied by zero or positive change generally right so these are some assumptions during the process of turbine uh, or producing process of turbine then uh, we have the condenser so we have the condenser in the racking cycle the purpose of this condenser is to cool the uh, wet steam came from the turbine right so at the state 2 we have wet steam came from the turbine then this condenser will cool this wet steam then uh, so this cooling water will pass through this condenser then we can cool this wet steam then we can get the state 2 state 3 right so here we say the condenser is rejecting heat at constant pressure according to the graph the condenser is only absorbing the light and heat right so the condenser uh, the cooling water will only absorb the latent heat and at constant pressure converting wet steam into liquid steam right so here so the uh, output of the uh, turbine is wet steam so here you can after the condenser we can get the liquid state without change in temperature that is saturation temperature right so the condenser input is wet steam output is uh, uh, saturated liquid right then the losses to be considered the loss potential are usually small this includes the loss of pressure and the cooling of the uh, con uh, condensate below saturation temperature right so for condenser we have the uh, equation that is uh, entropy at uh, state 2 will be equal to heat supplied to the uh, system plus that is our fluid uh, uh, saturation temperature enthalpy the entropy h right. h2 is equal to q2 plus hf3 that you know h, what is hf right so hf at state 3 <clears throat> because we have saturated liquid at state 3 right we don't have uh, uh, the total wet steam so if the uh, uh, vapor is wet we have to calculate the h right then we can rewrite this equation to get the heat supply q so q2 will be equal to h2 minus h of 3 and in the case of uh, turbine we have uh, h1 minus h2 but here we have h2 minus h f3 because uh, the at state 3 we have uh, saturated liquid alone so we we don't have the hfg part then we have to move to the the next component is feed water pump so if we consider this uh, feed water pump is the process 3 to 4 so you know so we are uh, in state 3 we have saturated liquid right we have to pump this saturated liquid to the boiler right first we should know the uh, how feed water pump works and why it is necessary right so this uh, we know that that pressure inside the boiler is very high right so the pressure inside the boiler is very high and so we need uh, feed water pump right so then only we can uh, we can pump the uh, liquid to the boiler or else we can't right so this process is uh, to increase the pressure and initial pressure uh, initially pressure at 4 is equal to pressure inside the boiler right so, so we need this pump 
because uh, the pressure inside the uh, boiler is more right so so we can't uh, uh, we can't uh, enter the uh, saturated liquid into the boiler just like that then there will be a pump losses the losses in the pump are similar to those of turbine and primarily due to irreversibility associated with the fluid friction right so because of the friction there may be some losses right so there may be some heat transfer heat losses right so heat transfer is usually negligible here so for the feed pump we have the equation as hf3 right so why hf3 you know plus wp plus then we have hf4 so here also we have a saturated liquid so we don't have the part hfg so we can take only hf right so then the pump work then the pump work can be calculated with the equation hf4 minus hf3 right so these are the uh, organ of the uh, components then we have another component the important component in the uh, gas turbine is boiler right so we have to supply heat energy into this boiler then only we can achieve the steam right so this process in thermodynamics is ideally considered as a constant pressure heat addition that you know boiler is uh, using to get the constant pressure process right so also we need to add heat then heat addition can be studied in three parts so so we can add heat uh, heating till boiling point and uh, heating till saturation of uh, liquid and uh, heating till the saturation liquid is converted into superheating right so we know what are the boiling uh, process and what is saturation process and what is preheating process that we uh, discussed in the uh, previous class so so there is there is three processes there may be chances of heat addition in these three processes in boil then there is some piping losses so pressure drop uh, due to friction and the heat loss uh, to the surroundings are the most important piping losses right so there will be some piping connections in the uh, system so there will be some uh, piping losses be there then this one dash so just consider this one yes this process one one dash so one dash and one represents state of the steam leaving and entering the turbine respectively the dotted line represents the frictional loss and other constant pressure heat losses to the surrounding right so uh, if uh, there is no losses we can directly take this uh, state one if there is a uh, piping losses involved in this system we have to take the state one dash right so pressure drop in the uh, boiler and also in the pipeline uh, from the pump from that so due to pressure drop in the boiler water entering the boiler must be pumped to much higher pressure right so right so we need pump here then the desired steam leaving the boiler and this occurs additional pump work right so we need more pump work if there is no if there is uh, um, pump losses right so we have to avoid that to get the uh, optimum uh, pump work so we have some demerits in the uh, rankin cycle so to rectify that we have the, the sir rankin uh, produces sir and rankin is a, a name of a scientist of our uh, rankin cycle then uh, he uh, proposed these uh, two alternate methods to improve the developments right so we have a reheated rankin cycle and we have regenerated ranking cycle what we discussed as in the earlier cycle right so we have we can we can is it possible to reheat the ranking cycle also it is possible to regenerate the regenerated ranking cycle so this, this is the reheat ranking cycle so the thing is we can introduce two turbines so one is high pressure uh, high pressure turbine and the uh, low pressure turbine is uh, joined in series right so the uh, uh, 
uh, vapor from the uh, boiler can be employed to activate this high pressure turbine then the exit of this turbine can also reheated here okay so we can take this boiler temperature to reheat the turbine of the exit uh, the reheat the exit uh, vapor of the high pressure turbine again this reheated uh, uh, vapor is sent to the input of our low pressure turbine right so this again we can produce we can get more work right? so here we can produce some work also we can here produce some work so if we want a network we have to add together so we can get some improved work done right so after this uh, low pressure turbine we can get uh, the exit as usual then we have condenser we have pump then this will turn to the boiler again then there is a cyclic process right so the optimal way of increasing the boiler pressure but not increase the moisture content in the existing vapor is to reheat the vapor after it's exist from the first stage turbine கண்ணா கேக்குதாமா எஸ் சார் கேக்குது சார் எஸ் சார் ஓகே انا ஷேர் ஸ்லைட்ஸ் வெயிட் டென் மினிட்ஸ் ரேங்கின் சைக்கிள் so this is a ts diagram of our uh, reheat ranking cycle so so look at this okay 
just look at this so because of this alone we are uh, we they implemented the reheat rankin cycle so in high uh, turb high pressure turbine there is a, a isentropic process then again this during this reheating process the pressure of this uh, uh, turbine uh, pressure of this uh, uh, vapor is uh, increased to the initial state then again there, there is a uh, low pressure uh, turbine work then again there is a constant isentropic process right so because of that alone they produce this uh, reheat ranking cycle right so this is the actual uh, ranking cycle TV, uh, ts diagram but uh, if you if we introduce the reheating process we can get this shift in this ts diagram right so the energy analysis in this uh, reheat uh, ranking cycle the heat transfer and work output both change right so the q in the heat supplied in the boiler will be uh, uh, q primary plus q reheat so also we need more we need to supply more heat energy into the boiler because we are adding the heating portion in the boiler so that will be calculated in this h3 minus h2 plus h5 minus h4 right so let's consider these points then the also we can we can get the uh, two turbines right we can uh, get the the w net will be your uh, uh, turbine one work output then plus w2 work output so we can get this uh, w out with the addition of these two w's right so w1 uh, output will be h3 minus h4 and w2 w3 2 uh, output will be h5 minus h6 then we have to add both together to get the w net then we can calculate the thermal efficiency of this ranking cycle the formula work done by heat supply so we have uh, work done as work output and we have uh, heat supply as the q supply q n right then there is another possibility of a re, uh, ranking cycle that is called regeneration ranking cycle so regeneration the use uh, regenerator to re, uh, to heat up the liquid uh, from the uh, where we is here in pump during the boiler we can uh, re, we can regenerate the liquid leaving the pump before sending into the boiler therefore increases the uh, average temperature so if you if we increase the average temperature we can get the uh, increased efficiency as well so during heat addition in the boiler so uh, this ts diagram having this uh, uh, shift is because of lower temperature heat addition but if we want to get increased entropy we need high temperature heat addition right so this extract steam from the turbine to provide a heat shows in the regenerator so this this point so if we provide regenerator we can get the extra steam from the turbine then these three the uh, use of regenerator to heat up the feed water so we will look that in the next slide so regeneration can happen with the use of this one right so, so there is a boiler there is a pump and we need to introduce another pump right so after condenser we have pump but to re regenerate we need to uh, introduce another pump so we have pump one and pump two we have pump one and pump two actually the output from the condenser is pumped to the uh, pumped to the open uh, feed water heat exchanger right so then this turbine the output of the turbine the exist of the turbine also connected these to this and mixed to this uh, both liquid and uh, some of uh, our vapor so the output of the uh, turbine is wet steam right so this wet steam 
and the uh, saturated liquid are mixed together in this uh, feed water uh, heat uh, exchanger then again this will uh, pumped to the boiler right so normally uh, after the uh, the exit of the pump will be a li saturated liquid but here there is a chance if we regenerate the uh, if we mix the wet steam uh, with this uh, saturated liquid right so uh, the thing is we have to increase the uh, pressure of this uh, saturated liquid before entering into the boiler right so the other processes will be same we have to introduce two pumps in this uh, regenerator ranking cycle right, so this is, will give you the uh, ts diagram of a regenerator ranking cycle so if we provided two pumps we can we can get these two ships right so here for the regenerator ranking cycle energy analysis is heat transfer and water output both the change so heat supply into the system will be h5 minus h4 and a heat uh, output from the turbine will be uh, that is 1 minus x into h7 minus uh, h1 so just you can consider right so if you name this portion we can get the numbers so h7 minus h1 then the w uh, work of the turbine output the wt output will be h6 minus h5 minus h6 plus 1 minus y h6 minus h7 so we have to uh, consider the uh, so there is two ways right so there is two ways after the exit of a turbine so we have to consider both then the uh, so we need we are giving the pump work right so we are giving input to the pump so that also can be calculated that is 1 minus y into w uh, of a pump 1 plus w of pump 2 then that is can be written as h2 minus h1 plus h4 minus h3 then this efficiency so here 1 minus x okay so you know what is x so that is uh, our dryness fraction right so dryness fraction simply we can tell that uh, uh, our uh, wetness fraction right so the wetness fraction of this because we have a wet steam here right so we have to consider these uh, formulas then if you consider we can get the thermal efficiency of the uh, regenerator ranking cycle as uh, done by heat supply so we have we can uh, use this uh, done we have to add both together work done will be wt out minus wt wp in right so heat supply and the heat ejector to be considered to get the uh, heat network then this q in can be used to get the, to find the thermal efficiency so in general the more feed water heat has the better the cycle efficiency so if you provide more uh, feed water heater actually this is feed water heater Right, so this feed water is heated with the use of this exit of the wet steam. Right, so this feed water is heated with the wet steam of exit from the turbine. So if uh, there is a more feed water heater, we can uh, get the better efficiency of the cycle. And then this is our actual. Uh, uh, ranking cycle so this turbine produces more work if the water is heated to superheated region right so so inlet of the uh, turbine you know that is uh, uh, heated uh, vapor but if that is a superheated vapor we can get the more work so if the water is heated to superheated then the turbine will produce more work that uh, vice versa then but there is a problem if water is heated to superheated right what will happen can you able to imagine 
So we can get the improved uh, uh, work done by the turbine if V uses the superheated vapor, but there is a problem. What will happen when it's contents to the vapor is not converted into water completely, it uh, remains still as a mixture, right? So we need to pump that, right? So it is difficult to pump to handle both liquid and water, which leads cavitation, right? So during pumping process, uh, there will be some difficulty if we use a superheated vapor as a medium of turbine, right? So we can know what is cavitation. So this is the process cavitation. So we will, uh, these are the blades of our turbine. So if we use a superheated vapor to rotate this turbine, there is a possibility of cavitation. So the cavitation means sudden formation and the collapsing of air bubbles around the impeller when they moved from low pressure region to high pressure region. Right. So there will be some possible to do from the uh, cavitation. Right. So there will be some uh, vapor bubbles will be there. Then collapsing bubbles will be there that will produce uh, some liquids saturated liquids also there will be some vapors so to pump there is a mixture of liquid and vapor so during pumping process there will be difficulty so cavitation does not show quick effort on the pump but if the cavitation call uh, continues regular regularly it will destroy the pump very badly because that that uh, we don't have um, this uh, superheated vapor as a medium so we will use the we will produce uh, a saturated vapor as a output of a boiler so this is the rankin cycle so as as like uh, our uh, our previous uh, thermodynamic cycles so this rankin cycle also uh, cycles with this cycles we can produce uh, work with the use of thermodynamic or heat energy. Then, so this simulation, we can try to solve this uh, problem. So just uh, look at this problem. So they tabulated the properties of the uh, cycle. The uh, inlet turbine pressure is 6 MPa and quality x is uh, sorry uh, quality of temperature right so t is uh, 380 degrees celsius and exit from temp turbine pressure is uh, 10 kilopascal then uh, we have uh, x 0.9 90 percentage quality then we have velocity 200 meter per second then we have the properties uh, exit from condenser that is uh, pressure is 9 kilopascal then uh, the uh, uh, state is saturation that you know. Then uh, we have the other properties uh, exit from pump is 7 pressure is 7 MPa. Then uh, exit from boiler pressure is uh, 6.5 MPa. And temperature is uh, 400 degrees Celsius. Also they gave uh, rate of flow steam flow is 10,000 kg per hour. So we can uh, take this rate of steam flow as m, m mass flow rate. So mass flow rate should be in kg per second. Just we have to convert that. Right. So these are the given data uh, in the ranking cycle problem. Then we have to calculate the power output of the turbine. Right. So we can we, we have the formula. Right. Then we are we, we have to found the heat transfer per hour in the boiler and the condenser separately to fetch a heat transfer to be solved. Then mass of cooling water circulated per hour in the condenser cooling inlet temperature, cooling water 20 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius exit from the condenser. So yes, we can try to solve this problem. See, there are some uh, uh, given data is available and uh, we have formulas and we have to solve these questions right so let's try 
to solve the first question power output of the turbine so turbine just consider the turbine port it's alone so turbine so we have p1 and we have t1 and we have p2 and we have x also we have v that is our velocity 2 right so the power output of the turbine at 60 bar and uh, 380 degree celsius so that p1 and t1 given right so we can take the properties from the property tables right so as usual what we did in the earlier uh, thermodynamic cycles we can take the uh, thermodynamic properties from the uh, property tables and chart so here we have to use the steam table because the working medium is steam so that you know uh, we have to use the uh, if uh, pressure and temperature given we have to use the pressure table just you can refer that uh, property tables and charge can you able to see the uh, property tables and chart slides in your end right so we have to look the saturated water pressure table that is uh, that was in a5 just if you look that right uh, just before that we have to assume that this one so you know uh, what is the output of the turbine right so the output of the turbine will be wet steam right will be wet steam that is superheated vapor so we have to look the superheated table now right so we we can't uh, get the property from the uh, pressure table this we have to move this vapor such a superheated water and in pressure uh, 60 bar that is over uh, 6 MPa and 380 degrees Celsius that is 6 MPa yes right so in 6 MPa and we have to get the properties of uh, 380 degrees Celsius but we have only 350 degrees Celsius and 400 degrees Celsius then we have to uh, use the linear interpolation then we can take the, the property of H, S, yes, uh, V, U, whatever we want but here we will, we will only take the H values because we, we use the uh, entropy values alone and enthalpy values alone so we can take this H value just if you use the interpolation formula that is uh, we need to get the properties of 380 degrees celsius so how can we uh, calculate the interpolation just recall that will be uh, this that is t1 sorry. yes t2 minus t1 divided by t3 minus t1 equal to this uh, h3 is here h2 minus h1 divided by h3 minus h1 so if you use that formula we can get the uh, uh, h value of uh, 380 degrees celsius right so we want that so at 6 uh, 60 bar that is 6 6 mpa and 380 degrees celsius the h1 value will be 3123.5 yes you can compare 3123 yes in between so so 3123 right can you able to imagine just if we calculate we can get this exact value of h1 3123.5 kJ per kg just try to uh, found the value then uh, we have uh, at state 2 at we have Right, so they gave one bar at state two. The pressure is one bar and the x is 0 0.9. Right, so we can take 
yes so we can take h value also but the output will be uh, saturated liquid right so saturated liquid so we can uh, use we can take these values so we can take at a one bar that is uh, from pressure table we can take this so we can use pressure table one bar is within uh, 1000 Pressure table, temperature table will be yes. Temperature table we have to look at it. Here we have to look find one bar that is uh, one MB that is thousand kilopascal. I think so. Just uh, value will be one ninety one point eight. This will come yes. So 10 kilopascal. So, you know, find one bar is equal to 10 kilopascal. So, we can take so the unit in kilopascal. So, we have to convert accordingly. So, one bar, find one bar will be 10 kilopascal. So, we have to look in this row. We have to take the properties in this row. So, we can have the HF value at 2 is 191.81. And we can take the uh, HFG values to 2392. That's 2392.8 kilo kilogram. Right. So also we have the X value. So we can found the H2 value. Right. So we know the formula. But if H is equal to HF plus X into HFG, we have to perform this uh, H2. So we can introduce those. So if you use the uh, uh, formula if you put the values then we can uh, found the h2 values that will be approximately 2345.3 kg the kilojoule per kilogram then the thing is we have to calculate the power output of the turbine so that we can uh, that we have the formula power this will be uh, mass flow rate mass flow rate into change in enthalpy that is h1 minus h2 that we know the formula so here they gave the mass flow rate so we can use that so they gave the mass flow rate in uh, uh, yes kilogram per hour we have to convert that into kilogram per second right so this is the conversion so we can if you divide that by uh, 3600 we can get the unit kilogram per second then we can use that then if you uh, put the values then we can found the power or power output of the turbine as 2162 kilowatts so this is the first answer for the first question then we have second question we have to found the heat transfer per hour in the boiler and condenser so we have to take the properties of boiler and condenser so they give uh, the property here yes so they gave the exit boiler pressure is 6.5 mba and the condenser again exit from the condenser is P is uh, 9 kilopascal. Also, they gave uh, the temperature. So, we can take these properties to find the heat transfer per hour. So, we can take we can take at uh, 70 bar, we can take uh, this HF alone because at this uh, stage, the uh, water vapor is 
a saturated liquid, right? So we no need to go HF G values. Yes, we can take only the HF values. So we can take uh, the HF values uh, in the pressure table. Just you can refer the pressure table at 70 bar. And if you refer the uh, pressure table at 65 bar, and uh, yes, that is not possible. Okay, so at 70 bar, we can refer that. So in 70 bar, we can. 70 bar will give you 7000, right? Yes. Approximately 1267. Yes. This value, right? So your HF value will be. Yes. At 70. Uh, 70 bar we can get the such of value and at the 65 bar and 400 degrees celsius we have to find the uh, h value so to that we have to we can't use this 65 bar we don't have that 65 bar is 6500 kilopascal so But the thing is, uh, during this uh, uh, boiler process, there is a again uh, vapor, right? So we have to superheated vapor. So we have to use the superheated again for found the properties of 60 by bar. That is 65 bar. That is 6.5 MPa. Yes, yeah. So here we have uh, 6 MPa and we have the properties of 7 MPa, but we don't have the properties of uh, 6.5 MPa. But don't worry, we can take the average of these two. Right, so we have to get the uh, property in 400, but we want for the pressure 6.5. Then we can take the average of these two H. So if uh, the uh, H of uh, first table is uh, 3178, I think so. Yes, 3178, right? So you can compare. So at 60 bar, we can we have the H of value, and uh, for 70 bar, we have the uh, H of value that is 3159. Yes, 3159. So they referred some other table, so because there is some mismatch, but the values is exact, the approximate, right? So we can take the average. Just if we can take the average, we can get the H value at 6 65 bar and 400 degrees Celsius. Right. So we have to. The thing is, we have to count the heat transfer at boiler and condenser. So at boiler, we can have the heat transfer at m into this HA minus HF4. So we can have the HA and we can have this uh, HF4. So if we, if we use, we can get. So because here we are using flow joule per hour. So directly we can use this mass flow rate in kg per hour. We no need to convert this into kg per second. Right. So if, if you Use the uh, given values, then we can found the Q value at a boiler. Right. But the second question is we have to found the Q value in condenser. You know, Q value in condenser uh, will be equal to HF3. So that is uh, Q is equal to H in this condenser. So we can directly take. Condenser. So they gave condenser uh, exit uh, pressure value, right? So from that, so the condenser exit pressure uh, state is saturated liquid, right? Saturated liquid. So there will be a Q value will be equal to this H value of this saturated liquid. So we can directly take that H value. 
yes, h of 3 will be equal to q of our condenser. So we can take the according value of our uh, at uh, 0.09 bar. So that will be approximately 183.3 kJ per kilogram. Yes, you can refer that from the present table. Saturated water, right? So, yes. Yes, we have to interpret, right? So the thing is we have the values 7.5 and 10 kilopascal but we have to uh, calculate the 0.09 that is our, uh, 9 um, kilopascal. So if you uh, interpolate you can get the value in between these two. So that will be approximately 183.3 kJ per kilogram. Yes, 183 kJ per kilogram. Right, so we can get the properties. Right, so then the ideal ranking cycle with the with or without superheat that we discussed. So the maximum temperature of superheated is limited by metallurgical considerations. Uh, the current state of the art allows about 700 degrees Celsius. So there is some uh, metallurgical consideration. We can is it possible to only allow 700 degrees Celsius? So superheating improves both efficiency, uh, both efficiency and the turbine excess quality. So if we improve, if we introduce superheating, we can uh, we can increase the temperature. Because of that, we can get the increased efficiency and the increased quality. That is dryness fraction. Then, uh, however, the maximum temperature of superheat is limited by a metallurgical consideration. Right, that uh, we can uh, improve temperature up to only 700 degrees Celsius. Right, so so this will happen with the use of this uh, superheating. So this is a summary of a superheating ranking cycle. Then, so that is that's from the uh, ranking cycle. Right, so we can move to the next chapter that is jet propulsion. Right, so in this third unit we have the chapter with the jet propulsion. So actually this is your gas turbine, gas cycle, right. So what we discussed in the ranking cycle is a uh, vapor cycle, but here in jet propulsion we will use the gas cycle right so we can look what is jet propulsion an engine that burns fuels and uses the expanding exhaust gas to turn the turbine and or, or produce the thirst thing is we have to use a thirst to oh, run the jet the concept of thirst is based on the principle of newton third law that you know very well for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction Right, so this uh, jet propulsion is working application of uh, the Newton third law, also the first law. Right, so this is the uh, turbine, then we have uh, nozzle, then we can uh, we can control this excess velocity with the use of these components in jet engines. So in jet engines, the high temperature and high pressure gases leaving the turbine are accelerated in a nozzle to provide this thrust okay wow. so we can uh, we can control the uh, thrust with the use of these nozzles so we will look that so the principle of jet engines so it is based on the newton's first and third law of motion a jet engine is an engine that uh, discharges a fast moving jet of fluid to generate uh, thrust in accordance with the newton's third law of motion Right, though these are the principles of uh, jet engines. 
and we have another principle an engine that burns fuels and uses the expanding exhaust gas to turn a turbine and or, or propel or produce thrust right so we will burn fuels to produce thrust and this thrust can be used to to turn a turbine as well then these are some history of our jet engines this we can refer that so you no need to discuss this in this class just we can refer this so these are the histories then these are the components of our jet engines actually the name of the jet engines were given uh, these are the components of our jet engines just we can uh, look that right so we can skip that we can then we can move to the uh, types of jet engines here we have the types as the water jets motor jets turbo jets turbo fans ram jets and rocket jets rockets right so these are the types of jet engines then these are the components so we can have the air intake then we can have the compressor then followed by we can have the combustion chamber so in that combustion chamber we have to uh, introduce the fuel burner then we can have the uh, turbine then uh, followed by uh, jet pipe and uh, propelling nozzles then the thrust produced by the uh, components is uh, controlled with the use of these propelling nozzles then the uh, opposite reaction is used for the working of a jet jet engines Right, so these are also a schematic diagram. So the air is gets sucked by the uh, jet engines. Then this air is used as a medium in the jet engines. Then there is some components: compressor, combustion chambers, turbine, then nozzles. So we will look what are the function from these components in the upcoming slides. So we have the working principle of uh, jet engines. turbo jet engines so jet engines are the are also called as a gas turbines so you know first we uh, differentiate that right so what is a uh, gas turbine and you know what is a uh, vapor cycle so gas turbine so the engine sucks air in the, in at the front with a fan the compressor raises the pressure of the air <coughs> the compressor Just wait a minute. The compressed air is then sprayed with the fuel, and an electric spark lights the mixture. The burning gas expands and blasts out through the nozzle at the back of the engine. As uh, the jets of gas shoot backward, the engine and the aircraft are thrust forward. Right. So this is the working principle of a. <clears throat> our turbo jet engines then these are the components this is the model of <clears throat> the jet, jet jet engines so this is the propellers so we can suck the gas suck the air and this is the uh, compressor then we have a uh, uh, combustion chamber then we have nozzles then this is the uh, turbo prop engine so we will Uh, you see the propeller in front so this propeller will suck the uh, air and send this to compressor then the compressor will compress then there will be some fuel injector then there is a combustion chamber this in this combustion chamber there is some fuel injector then this will pass through the turbine then this uh, uh, gases fired gases will rotate this turbine then we can get the work <coughs> then finally we can get the hot gases excess then this will be controlled with the use of nozzles so the approximately 80 to 90% of the thrust is produced by the propeller uh, what we used in the turbo prop engine and 10 to 20% of the thrust is produced with the jet excess of the exhaust gas so so this is the turbo prop engine then also we have uh, So this is another uh, view of a turboprop engine. 
yes we have another ramjet engine so this is the ram so we can get the air inlet and this this portion is compression compression portion then we can get the compressed air then this will pass through the compression chamber and here we will in initiate the uh, fuel injection then we have flame holder then after the burning we can pass the uh, uh, burned gas through nozzle to get the thrust right that is the exhaust the mac number is compared here that we don't want just to take the uh, components of ramjet engine then we have uh, uh, jet engines that is uh, here the uh, again the same parts so this is air inlet then this portion is air compressor this portion is uh, combustion cha uh, chamber then we have a turbine then we have ex the exhaust right, so the combustion will happen here then compression is happen here then uh, exhaust will happen here so yes then we have turbojet engines so in this turbojet engines additionally steam lining will be uh, produced will be there also there will be some diffusers then the other components will be same so there will be air intake and this uh, sucked air will be passed through this uh, axial flow compressor this is actual flow compressor then you know the components of actual air are types of flow compressor and in this actual flow compressor there will be blades to compress the air so that will compress the air then will pass through the combustion chamber then if we uh, spray the fuel we can get the combustion then this will pass through the turbine this portion so if uh, the turbine gets rotated then we can get the uh, nozzle so this is a type of nozzle so we we can we, we have this uh, uh, turbo jet engine uh, actual diagram so we can learn for that so this is a nozzle port this is solid we can the outer of this uh, core can be used as a nozzle to get the exhaust duct so the rocket principle is thrust the rocket thrust is the reaction force produced by the expelling particle at high velocity from nozzle opening so the high pressure or temperature or velocity exhaust gas provides uh, through combustion and expansion through nozzle offers a suitable fuel and oxygen mixture the principle of this rocket engine is thrust so we can control the thrust by the various various uh, parameters also with a suitable fuel and oxidizer mixture then a rocket carries both the fuels and oxidizers on board the vehicle whereas an air breathers engine takes in its oxygen supply from the atmosphere so we no need to take oxygen so that we can be taken from the atmosphere right so only we can take the fuel into the jet engines then we have the two uh, uh, propellants that is one is liquid propellant for rocket engines and we have solid propellant for rocket engine so liquid propellant the common liquid rocket is a propellant by by propellant it uses two separate propellants a liquid fuel and a liquid oxidizer so in liquid propellant we have liquid fuel and we have liquid oxidizer so these are uh, contained in separate tanks and are mixed only upon injection into the combustion chamber so they may be uh, fed to the combustion chamber by pumps or by pressure in the tanks so if we keep the uh, this uh, tank in the uh, uh, top of the uh, jet we can uh, get the pressure uh, due to gravity so we can we can directly fed to the combustion chamber or else we, we can provide some pumps to fed into the combustion chamber also we have solid propellant rocket uh, engines so uh, this is the diagram of a solid propellant so in solid uh, chemical rockets the fuel and oxidizers are uh, 
intimately mixed together and cast into a solid mass called grains. So this is grains. In the combustion, the propellant grains <coughs> is firmly cemented to the inside of the metal or a plastic case and is usually cast with a hole down the center. So this profile because we can get the uh, uh, combustion, we can get the fire but, uh, depending upon our requirements. Then this hole called perforation may be shaped in various ways uh, as stars, gears and other more uh, unusual outlines. The uh, perforation shapes and uh, dimensions affects the burning rates. Right, so this perforation is provided to control the burning rates. Our number of uh, pounds of gas generated per second, this also can be controlled with these uh, shapes and thereby the thirst of the engines. So with this, we can control the thirst of the engine. So the thirst of that only, they provide the perforation. Then after being ignited by the uh, uh, pyrotechnic device, so this solid propellant is uh, ignited by the pyrotechnic device, which is usually uh, triggered by an electrical impulse. This propellant grains uh, burns on the uh, entire inside surface of the uh, perforation. The hot combustion gases passes down the grain and uh, are ejected through the nozzle to produce thirst. The thing is, we can also use the solid propellant in the jet engines. Right. So you can you can see while while uh, uh, while propelling the uh, rockets, we can also use the solid propellants. So these are the types of solid propellants. So we have uh, we have uh, let's Yes, we have restricted burning uh, solid propellant. And so this is restricted burning solid propellant. So we can uh, the propellant, the burning will be restricted by some manner. So we can have the type as restricted burning solid propellant. A restricted burning uh, charge is usually in the shape of a solid cylinder. This is actually a solid cylinder, but it completely falls to the combustion chamber and burns only on its end. Okay, so that the initial one end of the uh, this igniter is here. So if we fire this solid propellant in this portion, so it will uh, it will burns like this and will end in here. Right, so that 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 because of that we call this as a restricted burning. So the thirst developed is uh, proportional to the cross-sectional area of the charge. Then this restricted burning charge provides a low thirst in this advantage. Under long burning time. So advantage is long burning time. This advantage is low thirst can be produced with this restricted burning. Then the th second type is unrestricted burning. So it is essentially free to burn on all surfaces at the same time, so maybe advantage, but the restricted burning propellant delivers a small thirst. Yes, we, we are comparing the both. Thirst for the relatively long period, while unrestricted type, this type delivers a relatively large thirst for a short period. Okay, vice versa. So we have two types of uh, solid propellants. So one is uh, restricted and un unrestricted. So its applications, uh, the unrestricted burning applications in uh, is in aircraft rockets and anti-aircraft rockets and uh, boosters. So we have uh, applications of unrestricted burning. So we can we can we can imagine, right? So anti-aircraft should be uh, propelled very in a fraction of time. So because because of that, we can use this uh, unrestricted burning uh, propellant, solid propellant that 
So these are the uh, liquid propellant rocket engines. So we can, we have actually a tank and fuel tank. So we can uh, we can mix it. Uh, that is uh, we can mix both together, and we can uh, <coughs> we can use the pump to mix both of these. Then we can uh, send these to the thrust damper. Thus we have a pump fit rocket and the pressure fed rocket so there is no need if there is no need of pump we can avoid that then we can uh, we can have the high pressure gas over the fuel tank and our chase tank okay, so these are some liquid propellant rocket engines then uh, the major components of our turbo jet engines that you know we have air intake we have compressor we have combustor we have turbine we have nozzle, then we have fuel system, then we have fuel uh, cooling system. So these are the main components of turbo jet engines. Then also we have uh, the intermediate components that is uh, turbo pumps. Then we have uh, afterburners that is that is for the heat. Then we have the uh, thrust reverses uh, that we will look one by one. So we have air intake, right? So to take air intake, so we have used the fan. The fan is the first component in a turbofan. The large spinning fan sucks in the large quantity of air. The most of the fan blades are made up of uh, titanium. Uh, it then speeds the, this air up and splits into two parts. One part continues through the core or uh, the center of the jet engines where it is acted upon by other jet engine components. So we can have the air shock with the help of this fan right so the air may be passed through the core or maybe the outer outer sides the second part the bypass or the core of the jet engines it goes through the duct which surrounds the core to the back of a jet engine where it produces much of a force that propels the airplane forward this uh, cooler air helps to fight the jet engine as well as adding thrust uh, to the jet engine so we can there is a possible to to split the air from the fan so this portion the bypass will uh, cool the uh, jet engines this cooling can be controlled the thrust then this is the fan that you know so we can uh, we can this this is the uh, inlet of the uh, jet engine Right, so then we have the uh, next uh, process, uh, next component compressor that you know very well that we discussed a lot of, lot in the early. So the compressor is the first component in the jet engine core. So this is the actually the, in the core portion, this is the first component. The compressor is made up of fans with the many blades that you know and attached to a shaft, a compressor squeezes the air that enters into the, prog enters into progressively smaller areas resulting in and increase in the air pressure. So the, you know why we provide why we provide this compressor. So to get the uh, increase the pressure. Then this results in an uh, increase in the energy potential of the air. The squashed air is forced into combustion chamber. So the exit of the compressor will be a uh, high pressure gas. So this is the uh, combustion chamber. This is a combustor. So in a combustor, the air is mixed with the fuel and then ignited. There are many as 20 nozzles to spray the fuel into the air stream. Right. So these are the nozzles. Right. So this provides a high temperature, high energy airflow. The uh, uh, fuel burns with the oxygen in the compressed air, producing hot uh, expanding gases. So the inside of this combustor is often uh, uh, made up of ceramic materials uh, to provide a heat resistant chamber. The heat can reach up to uh, 2700 degrees Celsius in the combustor. Right, so you know the next part uh, part of the uh, jet jet is turbine. We know what all the uh, <coughs> processes made in the turbine. The high energy airflow coming out of the combustor goes into the turbine, causing the turbine blades to rotate. Right, 
then this turbine uh, are like liked by a shaft to turn the blades in the compressor and to spin the intake fan at the front so this work output can be used for this purpose this rotation takes some energy from the high energy flow that is used to drive the fan and the compressor also the gases produced in this combustion chamber move through the turbine and spins its blades also so we can take we can use this work output in the turbine to in the other components so the turbine of a jet uh, spins around uh, thousands of times you know so they are fixed on shaft which have several sheets of ball bearings in the in between them because uh, the 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 main motive of this ball providing ball bearing is to avoid friction right so then we can control the friction this is a rotating part we have to provide frictionless right so we have another part that is nozzle so nozzle is the exhaust duct of the uh, jet engines this is the uh, jet engine part which actually produces the thrust for the plane then this energy depleted uh, air flow that passes the turbine in addition to the cooler colder uh, colder air that bypassed it, the engine core produces a force when existing the nozzle that acts to propel the engine and therefore the airplane forward. The combination of the hot air and cold air expelled and produced an exhaust which causes forward thrust. If the thing is we have to produce thrust and we have to control thrust. Then this nozzle may be uh, Proceeded by a mixture uh, which combines a high temperature air coming from the jet engine core with the lower temperature air that was uh, bypassed in the fan. Okay, so we have uh, two input and we can mix both together. The mixer helps to make the jet engine quieter. So we can uh, we can control the noise with the use of the mixture. Then this is the nozzles, so variable exhaust nozzles. This is the variable exhaust nozzle. This is the type of nozzle. So this is the name of the uh, jet. Okay, Boeing. So in Boeing aircraft, we can have this uh, variable exhaust nozzle. Then this also a nozzle type of nozzle. Then also we have turbo pumps. So turbo pumps are uh, centrifugal uh, pumps which are spun by gas turbines and. Uh, are used to raise the propellant pressure above the pressure in the combustion chamber that you know very well right so though so that it can be injected and burnt so turbo pumps to get the maintain the pressure of the uh, fuel tank then the turbo pumps are very commonly used with the rockets but ram jets and the turbo jets also have been known as a use of them we have uh, we can use these turbo jets turbo pumps in the ram jets turbo pump, uh, turbo jets and the rockets then we have auto burners that is uh, the component to reheat due to the temperature limitations with the gas turbines jet engines do not consume all the oxygen in the air run photometry uh, then after burners burns the remaining oxygen after existing the turbines but usually do, uh, do so inefficient, efficiently due to the low pressure existing <coughs> at this part so of the jet engines so however this gains thirst which can be used okay so there is uh, there is no 100 uh, percentage firing of oxygen uh, this uh, after burners will burn the remaining oxygen whatever left so because of that we can uh, we can gain more thirst with this application of afterburners then we have thirst reverses also so those uh, reverses also called reverse thirst so it is, is the temporary diversion of an aircraft engine so to apply brake so if you want to apply the brake we can reverse the thirst then we can control the uh, brake the exhaust of the charging of the propeller which so that 
the thirst to produce is directed forward rather than aft. So this acts against the forward travel of the aircraft, providing deceleration. Right. So because of uh, if we want to control the uh, brake, so we can uh, use the after uh, thirst reversal. So this 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 portion is the thirst reversal portion. So we can uh, we can we no need uh, we won't use the uh, <coughs> thirst reversers uh, while in uh, action. But if you want to stop the aircraft, we can uh, use this. We can activate this uh, thirst reversal. Then, you know, these are the jets available. Then we have a fuel system. Apart from providing fuel in the engine, the fuel system is also used to control uh, propeller speeds, compressor air flows, and cool lubrication oils. So fuel is usually introduced by the atomized strip. The amount of which is controlled automatically depending on the rate of airflow. So we have fuel system also in the, in the uh, jets. It also increases the energy extracted by the turbine, which derives the temperature when the faster, and so there is an increase uh, in air flowing into the engine as well. Then we have cooling system. So you know why we need uh, cooling. So cooling air then passes through complex process, uh, passages within the air, within the turbine blades. After removing the heat from the blades materials, the air is vented via cooling holes then into the main gas stream. Then this cooling system covers plates are incorporated on blades. Okay, so blades will be a thin shape to get the cool cooling system. So then this acts as a centrifugal compressor to pressurize the cooling air before it enters the blades. Another solution is to use the, an ultra efficient turbine rim, uh, rim seal to pressurize the area where the cooling air passes across the rotating disc. Then these are the components in jet propulsion. Just uh, take a note. Then we can uh, we can uh, conclude with this. So, so that's it in your uh, third unit. So just if you have any queries, you can ask now. Yes, we can move to the next uh, fourth unit in the uh, uh, next class. This if we, do you have any queries in the third unit? You can uh, ask now. Or else hang up. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, Thank sir. You, sir.